Hello, my crafty friends. Well, I'm starting the third breed of sheep in my um, breed study. And this is Winsleydale. And um, these are some Winsleydale locks. I saved these three out to go as samples in my book. And um, I got, I just, I just bought little bits of this because I am not a lock spinner. Um, as far as the kinds of things that people do with Winsleydale, I had, don't have any interest in, interest in making shawls that have these long locks hanging off of them or that kind of thing. So I just wanted enough to play with um, to see what it's like to spin, what the yarn looks like and all that. So I bought one ounce of these seven inch locks. Um, and then I bought two ounces of some shorter ones. And these are like three or four inches. Um, and I don't know, there was no explanation. So I don't know if these had been cut um, by the person who sold them shorter, you know, because they do say if you want to card them, just cut them in half so that you can card it. So I don't know if these had been cut or if they were off of a sheep that was only allowed to grow them to that length. Um, anyway, this is what I've got to work with. I have two ounces of the short ones and one ounce of the long ones. And um, and we're going to play with that a little bit. But first, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Winsleydale breed. The Winsleydale sheep breed is a large, if not the heaviest and largest sheep breed. It's a long wool sheep with a long shaggy sheep coat. They're very hardy and sturdy with beautiful fleeces, kemp free. Kemp are little fibers that are sometimes in the fleece that are not wool. They're, I'm not sure what they are, but they, they feel almost papery or something. They don't feel the same as the rest of the wool. Um, and I haven't studied it to find out what the uh, purpose of the kemp is. I don't know if they're like guard hairs or I'm not sure. But anyway, Winsleydale don't have any of those. <laughs> they are, however, a slow maturing breed that are carefully selected for their fine curly fleeces and outstanding meat. So here's a, um, they do have black sheep as well as white ones in the Winsleydale. There's, uh, they're bred for meat and wool. They're very docile and they, um, they do well in most climates. They have a white with a blue-gray face. You can get a black Winsleydale sheep. They have a long pearled fleece. That's what they call this, is pearled. I guess it looks like a string of pearls. I don't know. Um, that when it's not sheared, it can, it can hang down and touch the ground. They are polled, which means they don't have horns. And they mature somewhere between 10 weeks and 15 months. The puberty age is um, 5 to 12 months. Now, I don't know if the 10 weeks means you can wean them from their mother at 10 weeks. I'm not sure what the 10 weeks means. But about 15 months is a normal um, normal age of when they become an adult sheep. Puberty is 5 to 12 months and breeding age is 18 months. They just breed once a year. They love to graze and forage through the fields. The Winsleydale wool is said to be the most valuable and finest long wool in the world. It takes the sheep around 15 months to grow its complete long fleece. And they say the staple length is 7 to 12 inches. So I guess if you want a 12 inch staple length, then you would have to let it grow for 15 months. It says their special Kemp Freed fleece characteristics is a special quality that's trans transmitted to crossbred lambs, making Winsley a Winsleydale ram one of the best wool improving sires in the world. <coughs> the Winsleydale sheep as we know them today is from a large ram named Blue Cap. Blue Cap was the result of a, gro uh, a crossing of a Dishley Lester ram with a Teeswater ewe in 1838. Blue Cap was a very striking ram with blue pigmentation on his face and ears. He was also very large and weighed around 203 kilograms. And I'm not sure what that converts to in pounds. And he had a very distinctive wool quality. 
The modern-day Winsledell sheep have inherited these qualities, being large, with a striking blue face and long, lustrous wool. And here's some more picture, another picture of some Winsledale sheep. The North American Winsledale Sheep Association was established in 1999 by a handful of committed shepherds who established a protocol for the recreating of the Winsledale breed here in the United States and in North America. Um, the North American Winsledale Sheep Association has very specific guidelines for using blood percentages to breed up through five successive generations using imported frozen semen from the UK Winsleydales. Because the US government does not allow the importation of live sheep from the UK, breeders were forced to recreate, oh, I'm sorry, were forced to create a program to breed up through many generations of infusing 100% Winsleydale genetics imported from the UK. The North American Winsleydale sheep is well on its way to fulfilling its mission to recreate the lovely UK Winsleydale breed here in the US. The unique curled locks with a superior handle and unbelievable shine is coveted by fiber, fiber artists all over the world. The Winsleydale long wool breed of sheep originated in North Yorkshire early in the 19th century from a cross between a long since extinct local, local long wool breed from the region of the River Tees and an outstanding Dishley Lester Ram named Blue Cap. Um, the association is able not only to identify a foundation sire, but also to trace that ram's parentage, year and place of birth and breeder. Blue Cap was born in 1839 in the hamlet of East Appleton, five miles north-northwest of Bedale in North Yorkshire. His qualities, which determined the breed type without any further infusion of Lester blood, were his dark skin, superb quality of wool, and size, three, 203 kilograms, which translates to 448 pounds, um, as a two shear which means they could um, share it twice a year, I guess. The breed type was not named until 1876 when a name was required for classes at the Yorkshire show. Um, so here are some samples of Winsleydale. And the Winsleydale um, is very, very close to the Teeswater. In fact, um, I've heard people say they, and I read somewhere that, it's very hard to tell the difference between Teeswater and Winsleydale when you spin it or when you, um, I'm not sure about when you look at the locks, but when you spin it, they say it's very hard to tell the difference in the yarns that are produced by Teesdale and by Winsleydale. In fact, when in the book here, this is the, um, the fleece and fiber source book. When it tells you about fiber preparation and spinning tips, it says, see the notes for Teeswater. <laughs> so um, we'll go back and look at that in just a minute. Winsleydale works exceedingly well as a weaving yarn with unusual fineness for a long wool. Both Winsleydale and Teeswater nudge slightly more towards tapestry upholstery and fine worsted woolens than rugs because of the relatively fine fiber. Winsledale brings drape and clear stitch definition to knitting, crochet, and other construction methods unless it's spun into a dynamically textured yarn that becomes a statement in itself. And that's the lock spun yarns I was talking about earlier. <clears throat> the fleece weight for a Winsleydale is anywhere from 7 to 20 pounds, often 10 to 15 pounds. The staple length is somewhere between 7 and 12 inches. The fiber diameter is 30 to 36 microns, or in the Bradford method, it would be 44 to 50. The lock characteristics are a very long, wavy, distinctive curling locks with brilliant luster and smooth, supple surface. And you can see that. You can just, you can see the luster in it just sitting here. It, um, it shines like silk shines. The natural colors are white, gray, or black. Um, in spite of the many decades the two breeds have been considered to be distinct, the difference between them is hard to tell by looking at the numbers used to describe their fleeces. Statistically, the Teesdale and the Winsleydale have nearly identical wool. 
and it's likely that their fibers have handle 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 similarly in industrial situations yet to a hand spinner there does seem to be a subtle yet definite difference between them so that's different from what i've read from other people who said they couldn't tell the difference so um uh, as for fiber preparation and spinning tips it says the locks can be spun or woven as locks to give texture or use unspun to make a fleece rug the same is true of any of the English long wools with long enough staples. You can open by flicking or you can comb it, um, but because of the length, uh, you have to comb it with very long strokes to draw off the top with a combination of firm, widely spaced hands um, and patience. Be sure to keep your hands far enough apart to draft the long fibers effectively. It says, like Cotswold, Lincoln, and Lincoln, Winsleydale, among others, um, is a great source of texture in yarns for use as doll's hair. And that may be, these may have been sold to use as doll's hair. I don't know. I was just wanting some that I could spin, and I wanted to prep it two different ways. And so I bought the long ones, and I bought the shorter ones. Okay. Now I took um, I took a little over half of my one ounce of long wool and I combed it and I ended up with this little ball of combed fiber and this mess of um, the waste, the combing waste. So like we saw when we did the Romney, there's a lot of waste when you comb fibers. Um, I've seen people take this waste and card it when we did the, um, but this is so long, I would have to cut it if I was going to do that. I'm not sure if I'll do anything with this waste, but the, um, and I might cut it and card it. I don't know. I've got to think about that. But I spun the, um, the, Rom the Romney just I spun a texture yarn just from this and I may do the same thing with this just because I did it with the Romney and to see how they compare I've got um, the other part over here <laughs> set up to comb it so I can show you how I combed it and then we'll go to working um, with these shorter fibers and we're going to card some of them and some of them I'm just going to um, try to spin them into either this preparation or the carded preparation or maybe both and just add some more texture by spinning a few locks in into the yarn I'm not sure um, I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna do all that I'm just gonna do fiber prep for now <laughs> these videos um, are long videos I know that and I appreciate your patience but I'm really learning a lot by doing them, but they take me almost a month to to work through all the stages to get this one video produced. So, um, since I want to show everything as much as I can, that's why they end up being such long videos. Okay, I'm going to pause for a minute and move the camera so I can set up to show you about the combing. Okay, I got what's left of the wool on the combs except for this little bit that I was going to show you how I loaded it I don't know if you can see um, but this tip end is a little yellower than the butt end which is where they cut it off the sheep and I've read that you want to load it on from the butt end and have the tips all out here um, so that's the way I did it and it was pretty easy to, to tell the butt end from the tip end on these these logs so so they're all loaded on here and then um, the one thing I did that I'm going to try to do different when I was combing this was I tried to take two big a bites I think and so I'm going to try to take um, do it a little gentler this time see still we've got um, Anyway, we have to go through this probably at least three times 
in order to get um, get it as smooth as we can. I also have to um, <laughs> try to um, to be gentle because as long wools go these are pretty fine and I want to I don't want to make any more nips than I have to one thing I've learned when I do the combing is I have to do this if I'm going down or the um, especially these long wools they get caught on the tines and they they redeposit themselves back over here, which is not what we're looking for. Okay, let's stick that back on there and work it again. It's Let's try to get this last little bit. Um, it's not wanting to. It's not wanting to come off, so we may have to just call that waste. Um, so this is what this is what we've got right now. So now I'm gonna change. One thing you don't want to do is lock any of the wool underneath it because <laughs> that kind of defeats your purpose okay there's a place of i haven't found very much vegetable matter in these locks these were washed i rarely buy washed locks but um that was what i could find that was reasonably priced and um so I bought them washed. So we still got some that's staying in big lock formation rather than being teased out. So I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing wrong to do that. But okay. I think I grabbed off more than I should have that time. Okay. You got to get all the way away from it so that and as you're doing this, you're lengthening the fibers, you know, even more. And these stretched out would stretch out to about 10 inches. When I said they were 7 inch locks, that's leaving them in their natural state. Some people measure locks by stretching them out. So, um, but I don't because it, it doesn't seem quite accurate to me. That's just my personal opinion on the matter. Uh, everybody does things their own way, and that's perfectly fine. As long as you're consistent with what you're doing, I don't really think it matters much. If you always stretch your locks out when you measure them, no matter what kind of wool it is, then that's, I think that's fine. I just don't. I made a decision early on I was going to. Um, I wasn't going to do that, so. Okay, let's see if we can. Okay, we're not getting much off at this point. But I'm going to keep working at it. 
because it is pulling some from back here and I didn't realize that till after I said we're not getting much off. I do have a little bit of waste this this time so maybe my sco slowing down technique or going gentler or whatever you want to call it maybe that's paying off. Look at that. Poof. Okay we'll take this waste off put it over there and we're going to go through it at least one more time. I can't remember whether I did it three or four times the first time. Um, I know when I did the Romney, I only did it three times and it was it worked great. But Okay. All right. Here we go again. I'm having to really pull way out past it. <laughs> um, so another reason to get more more of a fleece than one ounce <laughs> uh, is so you can learn. You can you know waste some of it trying to learn what you're supposed to do. Um, See, there's, there's this that um, I think is waste. Let's put it over here. Let's not throw it away. I might decide to do something with that waste. And this too. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but it's like it's like knotted up right there. Literally knotted up. Um, If you can get that knot behind the tines, sometimes you can comb out the good stuff and it'll let go of some of it. I am not a professional comber. This is only the second time I've ever used the combs. The first time was when I did the Romney fleece. So, um, so I'm probably, my technique I'm sure is not professional for for sure, and um, probably suboptimal, but I'm, I'm doing the best I can, learning what I can. Sometimes you get little bits like this, that's just a little nippy thing, and um, it doesn't seem to want to come out, so... There's another bit that's, yeah, I'm just putting that with the waste because I can already tell it's not going to, it's not going to do something nice. This is definitely the longest fibers I've ever worked with except for silk. But, um, and Winsledale can be a lot longer than this, but. I don't know, you know, most times I've watched people use Winsleydale, they're, they're using the locks um, to spin a locked yarn, uh, like a boa or something, like where that they can make a boa out of or something. And that's not, um, I'm not interested in that. That's, I'm not a, I'm not a boa type girl, so... What I'm interested in is seeing what kind of yarn it'll make. There's another bit. Whoop. 
Oops. I'm still getting a little bit. I was going to say, nothing's actually coming off anymore. But I, every time I think that, then it proves me wrong. But I'm going to stop there and put this over with the waist. And I think this is sufficiently um, combed enough. We're going to go ahead and take it off. the. Now you can do this with a Diz. Um, I didn't on the other one and because I didn't on with this bit of fluff <laughs> I'm not going to here because I'm going to spin them together so I want them to be similar so what I'm going to do is just kind of pull off a roving and there's a bit right there that I don't want Okay. <laughs> I don't know if you remember the Romney, but we didn't pull nearly this far. Um, when we were pulling the Romney off and I've still I've got this floof here that I don't want to fall on the ground because my floor is not so as clean as it should be Okay, let's see if we can put it over there. I'm definitely getting more roving this time than I did the first time, which is good because that means I'm, I wasted less. Okay, there's a bit I'm going to take out. Now these fibers are getting shorter, um, but I'm going to go ahead and get as much use out of it as I can, even if they're not as long anymore. I'm getting more and more um, stuff in it so I think I'm going to stop there and let this be waste okay now then let's go back um, we'll start here and I'm just going to stretch it a little bit and then wind it and then stretch it a little bit and then wind it. I'm not trying to make it, um, I just want it to be more even. I do get it kind of tight underneath, but I don't think it's a big deal. There's some more stuff in here that I'm not going to fret over. I'm just going to get it out. While I'm spinning. That way maybe I won't take out extra stuff.
Okay. All right, now then, I'm going to take this off my hand and I'm going to unwind it because it was tightening up on me and I don't want it tight. I don't want it to compact the fibers when I'm not ready. So I want it to be um, just... I should have put something on the floor so I could uh, do that without it being a problem. Okay, so this is my floof that I got off. And now I'm going to wind it up loosely. I think I must have definitely combed that other one maybe one more time. Because it didn't have as much um, little bits of stuff in it as this does. Um, okay. So I've got these two bits of stuff that I'm going to make a worsted yarn with and now I'm going to um, I'm going to switch over things to the drum carter okay I left about this much in the bag that I'm going to do something with as locks and then I took about this much out that I'm going to try to card um, now I didn't think about whether I sh you know I didn't tease anything um, in advance. I wasn't even thinking about that I need to do that, but I probably should. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm wondering if I should use hand carters instead of the drum carter. Hmm. I'm going to pause and think a minute. Okay. I used hand cards and I carded this back and forth about four, four or five times to get this prep. And it's still very locky and curly and stuff. So I'm going to set that aside and we're going to put a little bit of it through the drum carder and we're going to see what that does. I am going to, um, I don't know, I'm just going to do it like that and see what happens. Um, I'm just learning, just learning there's a piece of vegetable, madam, I might as well get it out. Let's see what happens. that piece away it's kind of stiff okay well that's kind of a curly mess isn't it um, I'm gonna go ahead and do this with it just a little bit and we're gonna go ahead and put a little bit more on and we're gonna see if we go through this you know, two or three times. Um, I guess I should put some of this going to the outside. I was just trying to keep it all in the middle because I was just doing a little bad. But I don't know. Experimentation. Okay, we're just going to go ahead and, and do it all and see what happens. Um, let's put some over here a little bit, some over here a little bit.
And I know people are thinking that I'm, you know, you're running it, you're running it. And maybe I am. But I don't. I won't know. I won't know until I do it. I want this to be in, in enough of a bat I can actually take it off. If you don't put enough on there, then it's hard to hard to take it off. Okay, so we're going to just put this kind of all the way. Okay, well, there's my very curly bat. Let's see if we can even get it to come off there. Okay. not sticking together very much bat like but maybe it'll be better the next time it goes through it took quite a bit for me to do it on the hand cards it's a piece of vegetable matter um to get it to you know become a cohesive thing and it's still not the way a lot of wool is because it doesn't have the same kind of grip factor that um crimpy wool has Okay, let's keep going. Okay, here's what our bat looks like right now. There's a piece of vegetable matter. Um, kind of looks like Santa Claus beard, doesn't it? <laughs> Okay, I'm going to, um, I'm going to split it in half, and it's not, you know, like I said, it's not very cohesive at the moment, and we're going to go ahead and card it again. I don't like it when it comes off the edge over here. again a little bit like I said it's not very bat like at the moment so it we're just gonna see what it'll do it's definitely going to be a um, a textured yarn which I think will be fun you might see some little bit of lock in it even done this way even without adding any
Anybody who's watching this that's worked with Winslowdale's probably <laughs> probably it says I'm ruining it, but I got I want I don't mind it being a texture yarn, but I don't want you know locks hanging down and um like a lot of people do it. That's just not me. So I'm trying to turn it into something that I will enjoy spinning with. Okay. I think I'm just going to go ahead and add this in on top of it. Um, because I, I definitely, with the way my hand is right now, I don't want to do hand. I don't want to hand card a bunch of it. Um, so whatever I can do on the drum carter is going to have to be good enough. <laughs> and my debate here is just how textured do I want it to be. Um, Okay, let's pull it off and see if it's in some sort of cohesive form. If it is, we may just spin it like this. If it's not, we'll put it through again. is what the bat looks like now it is definitely better than it was um, <laughs> got a bunch of stuff still on here okay Okay, I think I am going to go ahead and take it through here one more time. And I won't make you watch that, but I will show you after I do it the third time and we'll see what what it looks like then. Okay, this is the um, what it came out in after that last time that I carded it. And I, I like it. I like that I can still see the wave in it. So I think that's going to be fun to spin. And still you know, finding some vegetable matter, of course. Um, so I've got this, and then I've got the combed, and the locks, and then uh, remember the combing waste? Well, I made a little bat out of that as well while I had the drum carter out. So I will spin that into its own thing. Um, so I'm going to have at least three different samples of yarn from Winsleydale, <laughs> combed, carded, and carded waste. And then I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this. Um, I, I'm not sure. I may um, try to, when I apply this, I may add some of it in. Um, I don't know. It's um, too many decisions right now. Anyway, this is the beginning, <laughs> and it's long, I know, I'm sorry, but I'll come back when I'm spinning and show you a little bit of spinning the different preparations. Okay, now I had uh, three different kinds of fiber, and this is the, um, the waste fiber from combing the top. 
um, I went ahead and I carded it up and I spun it and um, this is what it looks like you can see where it doesn't have clumps it's really a nice fiber but it does have a lot of neppy stuff in it I still think it'll be fun to use but um, but I just went ahead and spun that so I don't have any idea how much I've got here or anything like that but that was the the waste from combing and um, I've got one half of the comb fiber here and I'm working on the last little bit of the other fiber um, oh, let me put this back in here because I don't want to forget which one's which I don't think I could but you never know so better to be safe um, so this is what's left of the combed fiber and um, it's spinning pretty nicely one thing one reason I wanted to show you it um, and then show you the last little bit of the carded fiber is the um, the drafting distance in between the two are really different I've never I've never spun anything with a short forward draw that was this long <laughs> um, it's got the longest short forward draw ever um, or at least that I've ever spun and um, and it literally is like an amazingly long fibers my hands have to be really far apart and um, it's spinning very nicely and easily it's just um, it just feels weird to have your hands this far apart and spin a worsted draw I mean a worsted spin I didn't try spinning any of this combed I'm spinning all of it the same with a short forward draw so we can see the difference in the different preparations um, of the exact same you know fibers now the um, you probably remember but the the ones that I combed these fibers were seven inch locks and the ones that I carded were about three and a half inches so they're about half the half the length and that still gives us a pretty long short forward draw and you'll see that in just a minute but um, I'm gonna spin this and then I'm gonna um, I'm gonna ply it and plying you've seen me do plying if you've watched other things that I've done uh, so I'm not gonna ply it on camera because this video is already long enough but I'm gonna spin it and ply it and then I will show you spinning the um, the carded preparation of the shorter locks and then we will I will ply those as well and then I'll um, when I ply those I am going to show you that process because I'm going to um, I'm going to put some let me I'm going to put some of these locks the rest of the short ones that I didn't um, that I didn't card I kept some of them and I'm going to um, try to attach those in between the plies and make kind of a lock spun yarn I'm not um, I'm not really into long locks hanging out of yarn so I'm probably not going to try to keep them make sure they stick out really long I'm just gonna kind of put them in there and let them do whatever they do which will just make that yarn more textured there will probably be some sticking out and some that kind of incorporate themselves in and um, I don't know exactly how it's gonna work out because I've never done it before I've never tried to to put locks into two plies um, in between two plies and let it you know let them ply in there um, but it'll be an interesting process so I'll sh I'm gonna show that to you and we're we're about to get this 
Anyway, mostly I'll probably finish um, spinning this. Um, well, there's it's almost done, so I'll just stay on while I do it. But this is the first time I've ever spun anything that was this long. So, um, it's got some places in it where there are some naps. And I'm just not worrying about that. Because, um, I'm just letting it do what it wants to do. If, if I had a bunch of this yarn and I was spinning it for a specific project, I would probably be pickier and take all those nips out. But I'm not. I'm just spinning this to test out what I think about Winsleydale fiber. So we will see. So far, it's been fun. Now, whether it's something I would want to use, I don't know. So we're almost done here. Anyway, I just, if you've watched me spin before, you know that my short forward draw is usually sh pretty short compared to this. And so it's kind of giving me new muscle memory here. <laughs> but, um, oops, well, there's a, that's a pretty lumpy bit, but we're just going to leave it. And you could make this really, 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 really fine if you wanted to. Those are so long. You could just probably do three hairs together and it would um, it'd probably be okay. But Okay, let me clip this. And um, I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to go ahead and... Um, and Actually, I'm, I'm going to pause the video and switch over to um, to spinning the last little bit of this, the carded locks. And um, then the next time you see me, we'll be um, putting locks in as I apply that yarn. Okay, what I've got here are just three little bits that were left over. Um, well, left over. I stopped before I spun them. But... Um, you can see that this carded preparation is, um, it's not going to spin as smooth a yarn because the, um, because it's really more a worsted type preparation, but, and it's got a lot of little, you know, more little pieces and stuff in it, but it's, um, I think it's going to spin a, a fine yarn, especially if we're going to put locks in it. Um, it's not going to be like a smooth yarn anyway, so it won't really matter. But you can see that with this, because the locks were shorter, um, my hands are, you know, closer together. This is more like, um, how I spin most, it's a little bit further, but mostly it's pretty similar to how I spin most, uh, wool yarns. It's, it's really silky fiber to work with. Um, and it, it will try to, <laughs> it will try to slide through your hands. Uh, that's the first time that I've been, since I've been spinning this, that it actually has come out of my hand. But, oh, excuse me. Sorry, I, sorry I hit you. Um, but it, I can see, you know, why it would, why I would like the idea. Okay. Let's finish this last little bit up. Just a little bit. Don't wanna don't wanna lose it. Oh, 
Okay. So that's the the carded preparation. Let's take this off here. And I'm going to go ahead and set up to um, to spin or to ply the the combed preparation. Um, I'll just probably start plying it just a little bit in case somebody happens to be watching who hasn't watched plying before. Um, what plying is, what I've, what I've spun here are singles. And then you ply them together to make a two-ply yarn. And, of course, you can ply them together. Um, you can ply more than two, and you can make a, however many plies you want to put together. Um, I typically spin two-ply yarns because I, I like them. And that way, um, I get, you know, um, I get to move on to the next. <laughs> I had that a little bit too much. I get to move on to the next project. See, if I, don't, if I just do two plies, then I don't have to, I have to switch my machine to turn anti-clockwise because when you spin, um, When you ply it, um, you're turning, the, you're spinning the yarn, the the yarn the opposite direction. Okay, I'm gonna need to get me a new leader here pretty soon. Let me cut this. Go back up in there because if you don't, when you start plying, you will end up losing some of your twist into here if you don't have this already primed with twists. So let me make sure I've got that. Okay. All right. I'm just going to take two of them and put it through here. And we just turn these two singles into one plied yarn. I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna be a nice yarn. It'll be a strong yarn. It'll be a fairly fine yarn, but I think it'll be. If you did a whole bunch of this, I think it might be good to crochet or knit something lace with it. Um, a lot of people would think this is probably not next to skin soft, so you might not want to do something that's gonna be right up on your neck, but. You know, or a sweater that you don't plan to wear anything underneath. You wouldn't want to do that. But, um... Let me move this a little bit. you got to switch your... The position of your... Um... The little hooks on the flyer. So that... It'll fill your bobbin evenly, especially when you have a when you're filling up the bobbin. This is not going to fill up the bobbin even close, so it's not as big a deal. But still, it's a good habit to get into to change your hook pretty often. I 
Okay. And I'm going to pause and finish this and then I'll come I'll come back and and we'll work on seeing if we can get some locks in plying the um the carded fiber and putting locks in. I've never done that before, so it will be an experience. <laughs> um, while I'm thinking about it, I wanted to pop back in and say that I think this Winsleydale spun really fine like this would be really good to make like um, embroidery um, yarn out of because uh, when it dies up, it's 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 kind of got some shine to it. And it's strong, and it will spin very fine, nicely. So um, that's another thought of how you might use some of this, is spin it and dye it and use it um, as embroidery, you know, in a project, um, which I think would be fun. Okay, I've been playing with this a little bit. I tried to find videos of somebody doing this and I couldn't find anything where somebody was putting the locks in while they ply. So that probably means it's not necessarily a wise thing to do. Um, <laughs> anyway, I started out trying to put them in there just going um, like that, but then I realized that that's not enough to hold them in place probably. So now I'm kind of laying them down. Since this is mostly an experiment anyway, we're going to just let it do what it does. And I'm plying slower than I normally do because I'm having to do this. And I have no idea if this yarn's going to even be usable. Okay, let me see. This is what it looks like so far. <laughs> so, I'm going to do a little bit more while you're watching, and then I'll, um, I'll probably do the rest of it off camera so you don't have to um, So far, it's actually going onto my wheel pretty easy. I, I wasn't sure. I thought it would be getting caught in those hooks all the time. But um, so far, that hasn't been the case. Whoops. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, some of this is going to have locks spun up in it. And then I'll probably run out of locks and we'll just, because I didn't know how many I had compared to how much, you know, yarn I have. So we're just going to, it's just going to end up however it ends up. Mostly it's to see what I think about it, I think, as much as anything. Probably having those locks sitting right here in front of me is not the best plan, but I'm not really um, sure how to do it otherwise. Okay.
All right, it's gonna be interesting. Whoops. The locks are kind of getting caught up on each other. Do a few more little ones here. It's probably not something you should do the first time on on video, but that's kind of how I roll with most things. If I'm going to try it, I'm going to show y'all. <laughs> Let's spread these out a little bit so maybe I can grab them easier without grabbing a bunch. Uh oh. Oops. I think something got caught up. Yep. Okay. This is what it's looking like now. Okay, well, you've watched enough. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and finish this, and when I come back, I'll have all of these yarns washed, and we'll talk about them. Okay, I have spun all three preparations and um, crocheted, um, and I went ahead and did a. Uh, <laughs> my brain won't think of it now. A double crochet for them, so it would show the. I uh, thought it would show the stitches better because this is more like something you would use for lace or something. Um, this is the combed top. And I've never had yarn do this before. But you see, see this? It's not because it's overspun. It's because it is trying to go back into that um, ringlet lock formation. And um, it's actually, Winslowdale is not supposed to be a stretchy yarn, but it does, um, it does stretch out a little bit from the, um, and you can't see it here, but yeah, there you go, see? And I've, that's really unusual, I didn't expect that, I didn't expect it to, um, to do that. It's also the finest two-ply I've ever done, this was 26 wraps per inch. Um, I think it would be great for to make embroidery type stuff out of it. It's supposed to dye really well. I haven't dyed it yet, so I don't know. But I, I made this little swatch. And instead of putting this on a wraps per inch gauge, um, I just figured out what my wraps were, per inch were. And then I'm going to leave this like this because I want to show that it um, tries to keep that curl a little bit. 
in my book. So, so these are the things that are going to go in my book. And um, I altogether of this preparation, I had half an ounce, and that includes what I took out for these samples. So, and there was 40 yards all together before I did my sampling. All the measurements are before sampling. Um, and then this one was just 0.39, so like 40% of an ounce. And you can see that it's, um, it's a little bit, got some more, um, you know, neps and things in it. And this, but it did the same thing. It wanted to um, maintain that kind of curl, and it also um, stretches out. So, um, and this was uh, t total was twenty three yards before I sampled, and I made this little sample and kept this to go in my book. Now this lock yarn, um, I had the most of it because I, I saved out some of the locks to, to put in it when I plied it. So this weighed 1.8 ounces. And it was 58 yards. Um, so the yardage was not that much more. But it looks like a lot more yarn because it's got all this stuff in it, you know. Uh, I think it's pretty. It's very shiny, but you'll notice that it's not um, it's not trying to crimp back like these did. It's not doing that. It's staying straight. See? And I think the difference is this was from three and a half inch locks or locks that had been cut, I'm assuming. And, um, whoops. And these were both from seven inch locks. This was the carded waste from combing this. I mean, the combing waste from combing this. Um, and this is what my, how my little piece crocheted up. I tried to keep all the locks in the front, you know. Um, it's a nice soft yarn. It feels nice. This is the piece I took. Um, just like a little sample of the yarn and um, I wrote down in my book wraps per inch on these two I didn't even do a wraps per inch on this one I don't think because um, well I may have let me look real quick okay this one was 17 wraps per inch. And I just, you know, fluffed this up over the top and just did the this part for my wraps per inch. So it's a it's a thicker yarn. And I spun them all the same way with a short forward draft, except of course this short forward draft was short and this short forward draft was long <laughs> because of the length of the fibers. Um, I think all of them turned out pretty I think this would like I said be good for embroidery and if you just want to add in some fluffy you know something special into a scarf or something this might be good I don't know what I'll do with it because I don't really um, I'm not really big into this kind of yarn but it was fun to do um, and it's nice to try new things that you haven't done before so I'm glad I did it um, these things will go in my sample book, and then these three skeins will go with my other um, breed study yarns that I'm going to do something with um, once I finish the breed study. But I enjoyed Winsleydale. It was it was fun. I don't know that it's something I will buy another that I will ever buy a whole fleece of, unless I change my whole attitude towards this kind of yarn. Um, but I'm not the kind of person who wears, you know, a lock spun scarf or something. Not that I have anything against it. I think they're cute. It's just not me. Um, and so I, I don't see myself wanting to spin that kind of thing very much. Um, anyway, it was fun. I enjoyed it. I'm glad I did it. But this probably isn't going to be the thing that I go out and buy my next fleece. <laughs> All right. I hope you all enjoyed that. The next breed study I'm going to do is Shetland. And I'm going to do some of it from 
a fleece, a, a bit of fleece. I ordered four ounces of fleece and I ordered um, six ounces of roving from a, a small mill and I'm probably going to just do four ounces of each and I can already tell you because I already washed it that four ounces of the four ounces of the fleece it all I did was wash it and let it dry and now it's two point two and a half ounces so one and a half ounces of the four ounces I got was grease and dirt um and that's what happens when you start with the fleece anyway stay tuned for that one it'll be coming up soon Bye-bye. God bless you.